are live. We are live. Ah. I'm just waiting for one second here. Welcome, everybody. Um, everybody in my social media land knows me as uh, Karen Ansel McKinnon, founder of Speak Up and Empower. We are just starting a watch party, so bear with us for a couple of minutes because we have exciting guests today. Okay, so give me two minutes. This is there. Can you still hear me okay? Yeah. Give me two secs. One minute, sorry. Uh -huh. So we are there just one more minute and I'm hooking everybody up here. So I'm just gonna close the door here. Keep this one. There we go. Okay, so we are live. Wow. So, and Natalie, can you hear us? So we I can, can hear, hear you. We can't hear you right now. Oh, can you hear me? I can hear you now. Yeah, I can oh, hear you. Oh, good. Now I can. Perfect. Yeah. Thank you so yeah. much. Yeah. Thank you. Perfect. <laughs> Thank you. So I'm really excited um, to introduce a new real talk that we're having at Speak Up and Empower. And... Um, a real talk is real conversations. We have amazing, amazing guests that will be um, appearing. And one of our newest hosts, I'd love to introduce to him. His name is Saf Buxi from Saf Surgery. And he is um, from London, England, the UK. And he has his own uh, radio program in the UK. So we are just so fortunate and so blessed to have Saf um, doing this now with us at Speak Up and Empower. And he has an incredible guest. And, you know, to just drive it right there to home, you know, and keeping the conversations real, which we always try to do because it's always about kindness. It's always about love. It's always about compassion. It's always about inclusiveness um, and total acceptance. You know, we totally accept our members and we accept your stories and we love you unconditionally. And I think that is so key. So um, I would love to introduce Natalie Coleman. Um, and Natalie Coleman is from the UK too, correct? And a very well-known actress. So we are just so blessed to have her. <laughs> <laughs> Listen to her giggle. And her story, but now I'm going to hide so I can do the next part um, because as every I'm the geek behind the behind the show. You're running the show. I'm running the show. Um, I just love to introduce everybody here, and then um, Saf is going to take it away. So thank you, everybody. Thank, Thank you, you, Karen. Thank you. Thank you, Karen. Well, guys, do not fear. Saf is here. <laughs> and welcome, 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 welcome to Speak Up and Empower. Real talk from tragedy to triumph. Yeah, get me, though, and I'm Saf Buxy, and I'm Saf Buxy from Saf Surgery. What Speak Up and Empower is, it's, uh, it's an online membership-based community of heart-centered people who, you know, uh, envision more in the world. And that's what we're here to do. We're here to, you know, spread a message of hope. We're a community of experts from a wide range of fields um, who have a voice. And it's all about a voice. And without further ado, I've got my very, 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 very good friend. Hoo-ha! Natalie, who's actually from the UK, but she's originally from South Africa. So how's it, my lekker Yeah, how's it? How's it? How's it? <laughs> hey, it's how are you doing, Nat? Oh, it's so I'm great good. to have you here. It really is. Uh, Seth, it's so good to be here. It, I haven't seen you for so long, mate. You're so close. It's, yeah. It's so far. And it's just great to see your face again. Oh, that it's always you know, a pleasure to see. 
you know, the lockdown and everything. Yeah, but man. We but, each other again soon. but you're looking great, man. You're looking great. So are you, the, Tyler? You're the, as cool the, as ever. The last time I saw you was when you came onto my radio show, right? Saf yeah. Surgery. And that must have been pre Christmas. Um, I'll tell you when that was. No. That was just after Christmas. It was the weekend. Yeah, it was the. The Sunday after Christmas. I think it was. I think you you were my third guest, my first female guest, and I on my, we started on the eighth of December. Anyway, you, yeah, you're here. yeah, that and, was great uh, fun. Yeah, well, I thought, let me just introduce you on how we know each other. Um, yeah. Myself and Natalie, we we both came into recovery from from addiction together around the same time, and we met at a group uh, called Aspire to Be a Recovery Community. Oh. And, and I, I now been working voluntarily for this group. I'm, I, you know, I'm a trustee of Aspire to Be Recovery, and that's what we do. We give back to, you know, to, to organisations, to people who have, who have helped us in our recovery. And I felt it was really important to have Natalie for my first show because her story is is so powerful and it's so sincere. I think it needs to be heard. Um, and uh, we speak up and empower real talks when it comes to real. Natalie is real, as real as you can get. So it's, you know, great pleasure. Great pleasure to have my sister, my sussy, as they say in South African. Yeah, my booty. Natalie, <laughs> Natalie is in, Natalie's in the house, man. Do not fear, Saf is here. I yeah, don't think always, they don't right? they know. <laughs> so Nat, tell us, I mean, um, yeah. as long as we normally do, as we do on the radio, um, mm. we got a bit of time. You know what, Saf? Yeah, you know, I loved, I loved your opening because you said, um, you know, Nat's as, as real as it gets and, and all of that. And that was not the case until, you know, only, what, three and a half years ago. Yeah. Because there was nothing, I feel, real about me. Um, I could never be honest with, my, with people or particularly myself. I didn't have... I just there, there there was there was nothing um, that I truly I I didn't really know who I was you know most of my life and and I've heard you say it before just a, a talk I was listening to of yours an interview you did with with Chris and um, how it took near tragedy to get to the point where I love and accept myself most of the time most of the time um and i can be real and i can speak my truth and i'm not afraid to and um and it's just it's just an amazing it's just an amazing thing but golly did we have to go through some tough times and pull people through the ringer to get to the place that we are and truly Seth, i do believe i'm a baby still yeah. in recovery we might have been around for coming on sort of four years, but the more I know, the less I know. And isn't that a beautiful thing? It's, it's a wonderful because thing. there's just so much to learn. There's so much to learn. There's so much to learn. And and, and you say we're, we're, we're babies in recovery. Yes, we are. But you know what? I think we'll always be babies in recovery because yeah. addiction is such that it will grab you, it will get you anytime, just like that. Oh. That's Absolutely. what we've, we've got to be on the ball, 100%. And the reason why I love you as my sister is because you have done exactly what I've done and we've embraced, we've yeah. embraced recovery with open arms. We've, and, and I think the, the people who do that, and, I, and I'm not judging people who don't, but the people in my experience who do that, Nat, are mm -hmm. people who are totally done. Yeah, we had yeah. no choice. Yeah. We got Finished. to a level that we had to, We'd, we'd take anything, man. You, you tell me, and you give me. Yeah. If it was a magic pill, yeah. and I was on drugs, but if it was a magic pill that would say, you know, you will, your lifestyle will change, I would have taken that. Yeah, I would have taken that. Let's go back. Um, yeah, let's go back to the beginning, uh, so to speak, for um, when it all started, sort of. Yeah. Going, going towards substance addiction. Abuse, and, addiction. Yeah. 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 You know what, Seth? I um. You know the the process of recovery and the journey that I'm on. When I talk, it's you know I'm finding the um, the 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 so starting to find the reasons behind my behaviour all the way through. At the time, I never you know I I wouldn't I wouldn't have been able to make sense of um, of 
you know, of, of my, my poor behavior, my um, self-destructive behavior and all that. But the beautiful thing about recovery is that starting to the, join the dots of, you know, ah, yeah. so that's why, you know, mm. sort of became what I did and, and behaved the way I did. But, um, but yeah, to take it, you know, to take it back, you know, um, just back to the joining of the dots now. And yeah. the reason why we're able to do that now is because we're clearer in our minds. <laughs> uh, during Isn't the time, we had no, yeah, during the time, we had uh, there was we didn't know what dots the dots to join in the first place. Denial was a massive yeah. thing. So definitely no dots. But yeah, yeah so I, I just wanted to say that to people. No, but you're, you're absolutely you're absolutely right. I mean, yeah. and, and and Seth, I think I think the same the same goes for you. You know, we pretty much made it through life okay, did relatively well in jobs, um, you know, achieved fairly well, um, all in spite of ourselves. Yeah. And um, and I was only I was only talking to someone the other day, and my mind is clearer now. It, it's it's like it's 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 a miracle. It's getting clearer and clearer all the time, and I'm starting to really believe in myself and, and, and start achieve, starting to really, really achieve meaningful things in my life. And I just think to myself, so I did all of that then when I was as mad as a box of frogs, mm. you know. Um, I, if only I had clarity of mind then, but I don't think I was ever ready. Mm. I, was, I wasn't ready for it, <clears throat> and it possibly wasn't meant to be. And that was from a very young age, Seth. Um, you know, from a very young age, I latched on to um, addictive behaviors. And I'm talking really young, um, you know, horrendous eating disorders. So I started drinking at a very young age, but not just having the odd tipple, but um, drinking. The first time I had a proper drink, it was to total blackout and, and, and alcohol poisoning. And, um, and it just... The, it, that's why I think I was, was I born an alcoholic and an addict? Quite possibly because I just took to it like a duck to water because that trauma, traumatic almost experience of, of my first, you know, that first experience of getting drunk, which was really quite pitiful, um, didn't scare me, oh. didn't scare me at all. And I just, I just from the age of 13, just carried on the rest of my life you know, with alcohol as, as my best friend and then eventually drugs and my, my, uh, my anorexia and my eating disorder always there, you know, comforting me and making me feel different. What came first, the eating disorder or the alcoholism? Yeah, yeah, the eating disorder from eating a very disorder. young age. Yeah, so, so that, yeah, so that came first. And, and that, oh, the more I know about that, the less I know as well, but that was definitely in response to some... Um, traumatic times in in the home as a child um you know there were there, some very unsavory stuff going on um in the home abuse wise and um and and i and i think that it was number one a cry for help mm. number two it was um in this world of of that just felt out of con out of control i think that it was a mechanism for me to to take control of, of something and, and, and that that I found that I could control and did it really well was um, absurd eating habits and over-exercising. And, um, and it's a horrible illness, absolutely terrible. Some, it, it actually scares me more than alcoholism and addiction. It is so complicated and so it's so grim and dark as a mental illness um, that when it came and, and, and took its toll on me four or five years four and a half years ago wow <clears throat> just came back with such a vengeance and um, yeah so that started from it from a very young age so I was already on that kind of let me change how I feel with stupid stupid behaviors and then that that first you know that that first sort of drink up and, and alcohol especially was very common in in our home everybody drinks this is back in south africa right this is back in south like africa yeah yeah yeah, sorry, south africa. yeah yeah i mean bearing in mind we moved here in 2003 so i spent my life there bar a few yeah. years when i went traveling um so yeah so alcohol was just always around and it just felt very it, it was very normal to you know to just partake in, in 
vast amounts of alcohol and we've got it quite seriously in the family line as well. So you know what? I think there's a lot of contributing factors. Um, but at the end of the day, I put the drink in my mouth. You said you experienced abuse. Was it yourself personally you experienced abuse? Yeah. And that set off the anorexia. Yeah. Uh, yeah. In a form of control. Uh, it was Correct. your way of controlling. It was one thing that you had that it looks like you couldn't control the abuse. The only way you need to control is what you can do to yourself. And, yeah. and, and, and eating yeah. disorder was the first thing. And it, it kind of gave pain another, another direction because there was the neglect and the abuse and the denial and and I didn't know how to handle it and it's almost like and you know I'm trying to be my own psychoanalyst here but it's almost like a different it, it was a different you know channeling of of that pain and I could handle that pain I could starve myself and I could over exercise and I, you know I could do that you know some people are um prone to that sort of um you know that kind of behavior and and, and I was one of them and then shortly after that, the alcohol came into your life. Yeah. And, and, and that escalated, I guess, throughout the teenage years. Oh, gosh. Yeah. I mean, you were, a bit of a, you were a bit of a party animal, weren't you? Oh, uh, mate. I tell you, you know, <laughs> you know, this, you know what, Seth? We, we don't glamorize um, alcohol or drugs or anything like that. But I'd be a liar if I said that in the beginning it was fun. And, there were, and you know that, too. There were great times. Yeah. Um, but, uh, but then in the end, it wasn't then in the end it wasn't and you know i um yeah i i i partook as an adult would from a from a young age and then university days were just mental because that was in restaurants working in restaurants which was you know lockdown after a different type of lockdown after the restaurants after closed. the restaurants closed that's when the party yeah, started oh right? god and then it all just kicked <clears> off and then i'd have to wake up early in the morning get off to university or you know, have a couple of hours sleep, wake up, still quite drunk, go for a run, go to university, come back, work, party, up, run. I, there was just that cycle for year after year after year. Um, yeah, we, uh, we've brushed upon, and I understand if you don't want to talk about it, yeah. I know a lot of your story, but I understand, we brushed upon the, <laughs> the abuse that you experienced. Mm. <clears throat> Do you want to tell the people out there what kind of abuse it was, or would you rather not say? I totally respect that because it's it, it, it's it's well if or, or if you don't want to say the exact abuse if you want to say yeah. how you got through it I know the control and the anorexia. Yeah, yeah. You know what? Um, it was it was um, a, you know being abused by a member of the family that was really supposed to look after me. Yeah. And um, and he totally broke that you know broke that that trust and I was very young and I just. It, it just crushed my world and I, I, I kind of still have flashbacks but he's 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 passed now mm. um but I spent many years feeling guilt around it almost and I don't know why maybe in my heart I thought I I that I, I was I was to blame you know for it and stuff and um and it and that that had abuse served me well for a long time because I used it to justify my bad behavior mm. and um and my my um, alcoholism and my wanting to get away from myself and and everything um even to the you know even up until you know I went into into um uh, treatment in 2016 you know it was then that I started to accept responsibility for, um, for, not for what had happened to me, but accept my part to play in that when I was an adult, I should have addressed what had happened to me. Sort what would you, help. what would you tell someone, your younger self, if you like, if there's, if they're yeah. going through what you went through, yeah. what would you yeah. tell someone out there? <sighs> Saf, you know what it is, it's so difficult, but, um, find somebody that you truly do trust that is not going to judge you and that is actually going to believe you because I, I, di I didn't have that and when I tried to broach subjects I was you know you know given a, a backhand and 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 told that I'm talking nonsense so if there's a young a young self out there 
even if it's a, you know, you, you know who you can trust. And once you've spoken to that person, try and take responsibility for following through in seeking the help and know that you are not to blame for anything. Yeah. Honestly. And um, as my younger self, I'd be telling myself, you are beautiful, you're strong. Hmm. And none of this is your fault. None of this oh, is your fault. That's powerful. That's a powerful yeah. start. And, and, and your coping mm. mechanism was control of what you were eating. Yeah. And then eventually, and then escaping through mind altering substances. Yeah. And work. I mean, anything I did, I did to extreme. You know, yeah. study to extreme, work to extreme, exercise to extreme, drink to extreme. Yeah. You know, um, so. <laughs> so, you were, so, so you're, in, you're, you're in these lockdowns or the, 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 the when the restaurant shuts, you're drinking to oblivion. Yeah. Next day you go to university, you're yeah. studying. Yeah. And, and back at the restaurant, yeah, I guess. It all back. starts over. Yeah. Yeah. But you yeah. know what? Young and dumb and still had my, you know, young enough to have, um, good health that I that that I could actually cope with it I mean I was running a fine line but yeah. um but but yeah I, th I think as 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 young you and, and I was actually very fit you know I'd, I'd exercise really hard so I think you know I, I kind of balanced um my self-destruct with almost you know um uh, a, a level of you know a, granted myself a level of, of health through through keeping fit um and the body is very strong and and, and i was lucky that that I, I i you know i managed to get you know to, to keep myself to keep going through all of it with the aid of you know um diet pills which give you uppers and you know all of that stuff is that, is that where you got the energy from then from the office? oh a lot of it and also to be able to stay up 24 hours in a row when it came exam time you know, take a note, it's, it's banned now. It used to be banned over, over the counter. Tablet called No Bees Number One. Mm. Oh my God, was that a friend of mine? Um, <laughs> yeah, mine was, mine was cocaine. Yeah, but... yeah, yeah. No, but this is at the age, tender yours, age I, of I like think yours 16. is a lot more cheaper than my one though. Right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yours is probably, you, you, now probably easier to come by than the over the counter um, drug. And it, it was, you know, full of, it was like take like, um, ephedrine and pseudo ephedrine and so it stimulated yeah. the central nervous system i could stay awake forever i didn't have an appetite for bonus and so yeah, yeah so there was nothing healthy about what i was doing oh. and um i was just yeah just burning the candle from 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 every end um and, and not being in the present though never never really in the present mm. it's like you know not appreciating life you know, it, as I do now. Back then, I probably thought I was, but I was never. I was always no. chasing the next high, chasing the next party, chasing the next exam, chasing the next shift at work, chasing the next boy. You know, all all of that. Talking about boys, you you had a relationship that I know of, and to get away from that relationship, you you, just, you work at one and thought, you know what, I'm going to Malaysia. Let's go to Kuala yes, Lumpur, yeah. or wherever it was, and then yeah. you're in Malaysia. How did that? How did that come about? Oh, you know what? This is like really in the midst of like proper madness. Um, so yeah, I, I had uh, I had a boyfriend who I was um, quite, yeah I was pretty pretty crazy about him, and um, <laughs> we broke up because um, my best friend's sister kind of stole him, right? Wow. And um, and my best friend and I we. I oh, had a total fallout over it, which absolutely crushed me because it was so, I had such a codependent relationship with her in the true sense. I was finding my identity in her and her me. It was, it was, it was an unhealthy and toxic relationship, but that broke down. He, boyfriend went off with the sister. So I thought I was going to run away and pack my bags. And off I went to um, from South Africa to Malaysia to a tiny little island where no one could find me. So I packed my clothes and my problems in my suitcase and off I went. And not, a, not even a month after I'd been there, who steps off the boat on the beach? Boyfriend and new girlfriend. Oh, now, so you the, think, not, not only did the ex-geezer come, he brought the girl with him. Yeah, man. Jeez. Jeez. 
<laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm like leaving my problems behind, and they so follow me. You just couldn't make it up. I, this is four my, weeks I, after you. This is four weeks after you made the move. Yeah, it was but, about but, four weeks after I got there. But the four weeks you were there, you were yeah. still partying. You were oh, working, God, yeah. partying, working. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh, for the full three years that I was in Malaysia, it was just work, 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 work. Party, party, party. Drink, 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 drink. Cause yeah. problems. Try yeah. and fix them. Yeah. Uh, work harder yeah um it was it was insane i was only supposed to be there for a year but i really fell in love with uh with everything that was local and and asian and i, I really did fall in love with the, the people and the culture and everything and i learned to speak malay fluently okay. and, and um i just felt it was just so different and i just um after they left things got better the the two of them after their two week two week holiday mate two weeks with them and I had to serve them in the bar in the restaurant oh, <laughs> and all the rest of it that must be bizarre but that's... I know I know um, yeah but uh, it was that was a wild experience out there it was but 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 life changing life you know um, but unfortunately I did take my my problems with me and uh, yeah was that when you were drinking, drinking to a new, a new level yeah. really yeah 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 i mean what do you do what's the worst thing you can do is give uh a raging alcoholic the keys to the bar <laughs> and in charge of stock <laughs> don't do it i've, I've been there as well <laughs> I, was, yes. I, I, mean, I was in charge of the university bar beautiful, oh my god beautiful. didn't yeah. last long but i enjoyed it <laughs> but, uh, totally relate to that so so what so, so three years later yeah back in south africa I um, got back to South Africa. I'm just turning a light on here. It's yeah, dark. Yeah. yeah. So three years later, I um, packed my bags with a few of the problems that were there, and I came back home. It was it was time. It was time to get back to um, how much are you drinking to the real the world. How much are you drinking though? What were you drinking oh, on a daily basis? Mate. I can't tell you the amount of. Oh God, I was probably on about six. Okay, this is just a kind of to start about just to wet the, the palate about six beers, right? Mm -hmm. And then as the evening went on, I'd probably get through about three quarters of a bottle of vodka. Wow. Um, and then guests would buy drinks as well. So there might be a few cocktails thrown in. Many a night, I, I don't even remember going back to my my um, my room. But this is a daily this is a daily basis for about yeah. three years at yeah, least. Yeah. We're talking Most 30, days. we're talking 30 plus units. Oh, mate, far too many, yeah. Yeah. far too many. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and did that, but Saf did that year after year after year after year, apart from when I was pregnant with my beautiful Roxy, um, I didn't drink at all. So you but met someone, so you met your partner, your present partner. After yeah, yeah, when back. I got back, yeah, sorry, we're jumping about here. So yeah, when I yeah, got yeah. back um, to South Africa, I met... Um, my 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 now husband um that was what 22 years ago um yeah and uh it's funny you say that because i've been married for 22 years myself so it's yeah, just, there's yeah. a lot of there's a lot of similarities in, on there is Seth, isn't there yeah. yeah so and then yeah and then we we moved up so we met in 98 got married in 2001 came over in 2003 had my daughter here <clears throat> in the uk in 2003 and that was a glorious time and that's the first time that I actually experienced the present plus responsibility you know plus like a responsible living and and total sobriety and my husband my husband often said to me after I gave birth he said Natalie I loved you when you were pregnant because you were never drunk and I'd like turn my nose up and I'm like, what are you talking about? You know, the denial, the denial is just amazing. Mm -hmm. um, how, pe how people perceive us and we just can't accept it. But, but yeah, mm -hmm. so, and then the, so, yeah, so we moved over to uh, <clears throat> the UK. I love it here. Yeah. Um, meet, meet beautiful people like yourself. Um, yeah, well, I can I can see where you're coming from now. Yeah, see. exactly. I feel that. I feel that. Yeah. Keep it coming, baby. Dad, I like. Dad, I like. Yeah, man. <laughs> no, so so when do you start drinking again? So you, you you've had a young baby. Oh, uh, about three minutes after I gave birth, Seth. 
No, oh, wow. not quite. No, 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 not quite. No, but no, no. But you know, not uh, not even a week after. Oh no, really? I was well back on it. But to be fair, not to the extent that I I was before. That took a a good few months before I was really starting to to get on it. Irresponsible, completely irresponsible. Um, once you started, you couldn't stop, and that's it. Yeah. It's, it's you got to that level. Hmm. Yeah, it must have, it. it must have caused um, a bit of friction within your relationship with your partner. Um, yeah, as it does, as it does. I mean, you, him and I have had, uh, you know, we've had our fun times together and, and make no mistake, but um, but I'm the alcoholic, I'm the addict, and I, you know, one's too much, a thousand is never enough for me. Hmm. Um, so, you know, he has choice, he can stop, I hmm. don't. I don't have choice. And it's great to be able to acknowledge that, accept it, hmm. and gives me something to work with. When you think you know? back now, do you think, you know, the, the trauma that you went through? Yeah. At such a younger, young, tender age. Yeah. And then obviously the, the, the alcohol went throughout your teenage and obviously the anorexia, yeah. and, but the, because of the trauma, do you think that's, that's what shaped you in later life? Yeah. To deal with things in, in, in a way of control, whether it be eating or whether it be drinking alcohol. Do you do, think that? Yeah, might, yeah, Seth, do you know what it is? You say to deal with it, it was to not deal with it. But you thought you would, well, yeah, That's yeah. It. It's, it's like, it's like you're running not, away. It's like yeah. You're yeah, it's, it's, it's exactly. a coping, because yeah. the problems are always yeah. there, right? You went to yeah. Malaysia, but the problems came with you. Hello, and I, and they, and they, this kind of, I made them quite big over there as well, you know. I don't think I'd be too welcome back in certain circles over the some circles, but but yeah, you know, just 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 you know, drag my problems around with me, mm. and um, but yeah, but 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 that's the whole point. There is I didn't I I didn't deal with it. I just treated ugly wounds with mind altering substances and self destructive behavior and self loathing. My self esteem was just. The problem is my self-esteem was like down on the ground, but I think my ego was up here somewhere. And that is mm. a really dangerous place to be. Mm. Um, and I can look back on these things and reflect on, I can, I can look at them and, 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 and help others to, you know, not judge them, but just, you know, help others to see how it is possible to, you know, bring that gap down and, and, be happy, you know, just be happy with, with who, with who we are, with, with who I am and who they are. And but that, um, took a lot, that took a lot of hard work to get to where you are today, didn't it? Oh, so didn't you know, happen. you know, like yeah. we said, there was no magic pill. Um, no. In, in 2016, no. You, you, you were made to go back to Africa, actually. That, Literally that, made that, for rehab, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. There had to be an intervention, Seth. There had to be an intervention because if I had not gone, at the end of July 2016, I wouldn't have seen it through to the to the Christmas. I was hanging, literally hanging on for dear life. Now I'm five foot ten, yeah. I weighed just over 90 pounds. That's like I was weighing 42 kilograms when I went out there. Oh my word. I and I was yellow. I mean, it it, you know, the anorexia and the, the alcohol had just obliterated everything that I was. Quite I, tall. Like, the five foot ten is quite tall, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you're Forty-two yeah. kilograms. Yeah, that's yeah. that's serious. Yeah. And I actually still thought I was a bit fat, um, but that's the yeah. that's the illness, mm. you know. And it, no, it was it was very serious. And you know, I went into life-threatening seizures, in and out of hospital, in and out of eating clinics, in and out of hospital again and again. Oh, it, it was dire. And if we're talking about that intervention, if I hadn't gone over there, we wouldn't be having this, this conversation now. So I have got so much to be thankful for. for my family, um, finding the money to get me over there because it just was not happening in, you know, in the UK. And, um, and the treatment facility that I went to, I think of them every day, every single day. And there's always little nuggets that I, I I recall when I was fighting the system, of, I was like, you know, this is, I want to go back to my old comfortable way of life of just being out of it. 
and um, and how that hammer on about how I need to change. And the only person that can do that is is me. And eventually, I found with a higher power, a God of my understanding, which is which is beautiful. Um, but yeah, the treatment facility. Am I allowed to say who it is? Oh, she can give him a shout. Let's give him a big yeah. shout. Yeah. It? So it's it's Houghton House. Houghton House in South yeah. Africa. Whereabouts in South Africa? In Johannesburg. Johannesburg. Uh, yeah, in Johannesburg, um, in Ferndale. Ferndale. So, um, oh, beautiful. I mean, it seems like they saved your life. Yeah. Or, or you being well, my there. And... Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> Listen, my family, uh, you know, got <clears throat> made it possible for me to get out there. But yeah, they they did. They absolutely, the, the, they were absolutely brilliant. The medical help, because <clears throat> I was in such desperate need for medical, you know, help, mm. um, as well as, you know, the mind starting to engage with life again. And they, um, yeah, they, 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 they got a quite a handful when I went out there because they weren't ready for the, the anorexia as well. And they were kind of gauging, do we keep her here or send her elsewhere but there was no money to send me out so they said okay let's just <laughs> let's work with this one let's see how we do it yeah and 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 beautifully inspiring people and counselors and peers and everything <clears throat> and it uh, sounds like a dual diagnosis facility because obviously you had the, uh, yeah. the addiction you had the mm. mental health the mental illness yeah. in the anorexic um yeah and they're yeah. both combined and they're both there oh. thereabouts and Fighting for airtime in my head was just a nightmare. But it's not like that anymore, Sam. <laughs> it most definitely isn't. But, and it doesn't have to be. What I want to know is, yeah. what, what was the final straw mm -hmm. that got you there? Apart, I mean, you say the family helped you, yeah. they got you there, they paid for the, the treatment. But what, what, were you like me? Because when my family got me into treatment, yeah. initially I was just there ticking the boxes. Yeah. For me, it's like, yeah, I'll keep them sweet. I'll do this and I'll still do my thing. Thankfully, it worked. Were you similar to that or were you actually genuinely wanted to be free? Yeah, <clears throat> I I was just, I was just, um, you know, there's so much that that is a, a blur in those months leading up to when I got there to, so... Because I, because I just wasn't conscious most of the time. But I, mm. but something I do remember is, um, I mean, my husband had just, he'd, he'd had it up to here. He'd, he'd tried everything. I'd been kicked out of um, um, uh, an eating disorders clinic because they didn't want to deal with me because of my alcohol problem that I'd been hiding from them. And then they found out. So, and then I was just becoming too much for him. My husband just couldn't deal with me anymore. He couldn't deal with the lies, the deceit, the hiding of, you know, bottle. He just, it, it was just too much for him. And, um, <clears throat> and I kind of fought it in the beginning when my family said that they were going to get me over. I, 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 I apparently found some excuses, stupid, lame excuses. But as, because by the time they said they were going to get me there, to actually getting on the plane to go was only about 12 days. But the closer, the closer it got to that, the more desperate I actually started to feel. I thought, I actually, I'm, I'm getting scared of myself now. I really need to get out of here. And I was really desperate. So, um, I mean, I, I just, I, I just plowed myself with, um, with booze for that, that last sort of, you know, those 12 days. But I'm, I do remember thinking, in, I was desperate. I was desperate to, to just, I, I think it was more to get away. You know that. I had no idea really what was waiting for me on the other side. Uh, um, uh. But I just wanted to get away from the, you know, from, from this mess and this, this pain that, that you know, that, that I was in. Um, little did I know the hard work that was lying ahead. Because you know why, Seth? You know why? Because I had to stop being honest. You and I both know this, something I could never do. I had to start being honest. And, um, and that was tough. Really, well, that's, really the tough. that's the first step, isn't it? Yeah. That's the first honesty. step to be honest. Mm. Yeah, honesty. And it's all very well saying, yeah, I'm being honest and not, not, you know, not lying to people or you know, trying to cover my tracks and this and that. It's actually, and, 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 I, and I still find myself being dishonest with myself because that's where it starts, is 
being honest with, with me, being honest with how I truly do feel about something, accepting those feelings and learning to deal with them. Hmm. You know, because yeah. if I can't be honest with myself, I, no one else stands a chance. And, um, and so, yeah, and like you, embraced, absolutely embraced recovery. Again, <laughs> it's the added to me. I just like plowed myself in, you know, absolutely went mad. But, you know, it was, it was, it was excessive behavior in, in, in the right direction. And it was the right thing to do. It's just, I, and I, you know, just lived recovery and meetings and, you know, engaged in the fellowships and, um, uh, you know, 12 step program, which is, you know, known around the world. Absolutely amazing <clears throat> tool kit for life. Mm. Um, and just opened up a spiritual side of me that never existed. And I'm not, when I say spiritual, not that I, I go to church on, you know, on a Sunday or anything like that, but just knowing that um, there's something out there far bigger than me and I'm not the center, not the center of the universe as I. As you used seems, to think or, you were. Yeah, as I seem to think anymore. I was. The world, world according to me. And it's a it's a beautiful feeling, feeling insignificantly significant. You know, if oh, that makes any sense. It does, yeah. I am nothing, but I am everything, and I only get that from the peace that I get from the spirit of the uni spirit of the universe, or the God of my understanding, which is very personal to me and um, and very precious. And and um, we have, we've had these conversations. It's, oh, yeah. it's it's a lovely thing for someone who was an atheist. And, um, you know, um, it's a very big part of my life. Don't forget now, I know the 5 a.m. you. I've been there. <laughs> <laughs> 6 a.m., 7 a.m., whatever it is. Yeah. Uh, so tell me, yeah. tell me, tell me, tell me what, what life is today like. What's it like? Oh, I mean, God. we've mentioned freedom. We've mentioned what is life like today? I mean, after so, everything no. you've been through, everything okay. you've been through. I'm, I'm going to ask you something now. Can oh. I do that? Yeah, man. This is the real talk, yeah? Yeah, man. Do not fear, so, Seth is here. I know things they don't know. I know. Uh, yeah. So tell me something. If you, oh. if you could wrap up how your life is now in like two, like two key words about your life hmm. now to describe hmm. it. Hmm. It's probably the same two key words you'd use. Serenity and freedom. What would you say? What you know, you freedom, freedom. Yeah. yeah. And peace. Which is serenity. Yeah, it's exactly. The same thing. We've got the exactly. same thing. And, and I hear that a lot. I hear in that spite a lot of people. myself, yeah. in spite of me, to have that. And you ask what life is like. You know, I am, I am so blessed to have a job that um, I, I, I truly am. I love it. I love the people. Um, I love the, the field I'm in. But it's no, but it's it's no different really from I say that you know the jobs that because it's in the same industry that I've been in for a long time. But <clears throat> the um, my my perception and how I deal with the immense pressure that I am quite often under it is a it's a t it, it can be really really tough and the hours are long. Um, just embrace how, I, how I'm able to embrace challenges today hmm. the way it, it, those challenges that would send me off the edge of you know anxiety attacks you know just reaching for the closest bottle or, or, or pill what's life like I am I I get, ex I'm, I'm terribly excited for the people at work, they roll their eyes, oh God, Natalie, just here she comes. I get so excited about life and about challenges and about just waking up the next morning. And I genuinely do, you, can, you cannot ask my family. I go to bed at night looking forward to the morning and to wake up with just positivity, just feeling positive and having mm. slept a good night's sleep. Never used to happen. Never. And I don't take, a single day for granted, Seth. Not a single day. I'm, and I know you don't either. Mm. No, to become complacent and take for granted 
what we have been blessed with. Just, yeah. And, I, and you know, I'm not perfect and, and, and I have my, I do have, you know, sort of ups and downs, but generally, most of the time, happy bunny. And isn't that, isn't that beautiful? Happy bunny, I love that. <laughs> now, it's, it's always a pleasure to hear you speak. It really is. It's always a pleasure to hear your story, especially where you, you know, where you were, man, because. Oh, mate. You were, you know, you, you you've been through some stuff, right? Uh, at a very young age. Have and, you? Yeah. Well, you know what? And and it's, it's beautiful to have a fellow soldier like yourself yeah, by my yeah. side. Um, and I hope we continue mm. to fight this battle and fight this big war together. Um, yeah. and, and we don't we don't get defeated because, as you know and I know, complacency, oh, especially with addiction. Our biggest our biggest enemy. Biggest enemy. Yeah. vigilance is is everything and it doesn't have to and it's yes we've constantly got to be aware and do our work to stay in recovery but the hard work was out there that was hard work recovery is nothing compared to what we the, the, the hard work that we put ourselves through in that that world that web of uh, of lies and just being trapped in that own prison that we fought so hard to try and get out mm. but never could never yeah. we were stuck we were stuck in this big time we were stuck in this rut weren't we we were stuck in this rut and i'm so oh. blessed and so grateful that i'm not there anymore and i'm so yeah. grateful and you are as well that you're not there yeah. either do. Well, look, thank thank you very much, Nat. It's, 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 to, we could talk all you, night. I know. Well, to have you as my first guest, it's been a it's been an honour. And it's Aww. been it's been a pleasure, but mm, you know, thank uh, you. We are speak up and empower. Uh, yeah. Real talks. Um, this show will be every Thursday night, uh, th uh, three p.m. Eastern Canada time, eight p.m. UK time. So please, 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 there'll be you know, we'll try and get a guest like Natalie in for next week. I'm sure oh, we there's loads, there's loads of there's hope loads of people. Out there. Exactly, that's what it is. Um, yeah. You can see us on Speak Up uh, and Empower dot com. Um, yeah. But I hope hope everyone enjoyed this talk because this is real, real yeah. talk. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank Karen, you, where are you, Karen? Where, where is she? she? Where is she gone? Woo, she's back. Yeah. <laughs> talk to us. We can't hear you. Karen, Karen is oh, on. Your microphone, your microphone's yeah. got a thing. There. Oh, There's so much noise in the background because we are going over so many different networks. Oh. <laughs> That's why I, I have to keep it off so that you're yeah. not hearing all this background noise. But oh. we are so blessed again to have you, Natalie, anytime. Oh, thank you. you know, we'd love you to be part of our community. I, I'm, yes, definitely, definitely. you have my commitment there, absolutely. Natalie, Nat, yes. I, I will, I will, thank I will, you. Everything. Thank you very much, Karen. Nat, thank you very much. Mwah. Do not See fear, Saf is here. Exactly. You get me, though. <laughs> love See you, buddy. <laughs>